Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on administrative tools. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our practical application test. That's the 22702 exam, section 2.3, where we need to know about these administrative tools, the event viewer, computer management, services, and the performance monitor. A great way to keep track of really what's been happening on a computer is by using the event viewer. If anything is to happen on our system, there's going to be a notation made in the event viewer that something important occurred. And we want to go here and find out were there any application errors? Were there any security problems? If you have a blue screen of death, messages get, get put there. But it's not just those types of issues. You can also find out things that are normal. Did a driver load properly? It will tell you that. Did a driver not load properly? It will tell you that as well. So even some of the normal functionality of things occurring in your system will be put into the event viewer. And that makes it a great place to go if you're trying to troubleshoot. You'll know immediately the last time you booted your computer what started up and what did not start start up, and you can start your troubleshooting process there. We can find the event log. It's in our administrative tools. So I'm going to go to my control panel. And under my control panel is my administrative tools. And in this big list is the event viewer. The event viewer is a consolidated list of all the different logs in our computer. On the left side of the screen of the event viewer is going to be a list of all of those different logs. I'll expand some of these out a bit so you can see some examples of those. You can have on the right side some actions that you can take. Maybe you want to create a custom view of certain things. You would like to refresh the view that you've got or choose one of the existing views that is inside of here. You also have in the middle of the screen the overall overview and the summary view of the information that's there. If you wanted to go to a particular log, let's go to our system log here, and it will pull up everything that's inside of this system log show you the informational level information about what's been loaded. Did it work? Did it not work? If there were any errors, you'll get a message that says, I had a following boot start or system start driver fail to load, and it was my CD-ROM driver. If we had a message from a user and they said, I'm trying to use my CD-ROM drive, it's not recognizing anything, we could go to our event log. We can go to our system view. We could either search for, you can see you've got a lot of find functionality here to find CD-ROM. It may take you to this very uh, very piece of the, of the log here that says there was an error. Here's the details of the error. And their CD-ROM drive isn't starting for some particular reason. And now we can start troubleshooting. Is it a bad drive? Do we have bad drivers for this particular hard drive? Is there a loose cable? And we can start watching our system log here and see if we can get this CD-ROM drive back up and running. A great consolidated view of many of the internal functions of your computer can be found in the Computer Management Console. This is based on the Microsoft Management Console, which means you can actually have plugins from third parties that can also go in here. It makes it a really nice central view of all of the different things that may be going on inside of your computer. So if you need to get to the event log, or you need to go to the disk manager, or another one of these functions that, insi that is inside of your system, you may be able to find it right here on the Computer Management view. Let's have a look at this. In that last section, we started our event viewer straight from the administrative tools. But if I go into my control panel into those administrative tools, you'll also notice at the top is a computer management function. I want to select that. And of course, I need permission to continue. And when this brings up computer management, what you'll see is all of those different things that we were running individually, like our task scheduler, our event viewer, our local users and groups management, our device manager, our disk management, it's all in here. Going to the event viewer, I simply click it. And look, it's the exact same event viewer we were just looking at. But because I'm running it in the computer management screen, I could then maybe click down to disk management and very quickly shift my views down to something else that's inside of my computer. And of course, as I mentioned, you can have plugins that are added to this so that I can have many, many other pieces added to this left side menu that allows me to move back and forth between all of the different options inside of my computer. As a multitasking operating system, Windows always has certain services that are running behind the scenes. Very often, we don't even see these services operating. We just know they're working because our Windows operating system is working. Many of these services rely on other applications to work. So you may find that one or two or three services actually rely on each other to operate. And if any one of those services isn't running, all three of them fail to operate. When you're trying to troubleshoot the startup process, you also have the option on whether you want to run certain services or not. If you recall, running that msconfig configuration allows you to 
turn on or turn off certain services. You can also do that from the command line when you're troubleshooting the startup process. So sometimes it makes sense to have some services turned off just so you can see if that particular service is causing your problem. To get to the services, you can go, of course, to computer management. You can also bring them up individually in your control panel, administrative services, and administrative tools and services. Let's start up our services view. Let's do that in the control panel, administrative tools, and let's choose services. Inside of the services console, we'll see every single service that could run on this machine. We're also going to see every service that is running and not running. And you can see it bring up this extended view. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And these are the things that run behind the scenes. The application experience, for instance, it will process application compatibility cache requests so your apps work properly. It's started, and it's set to automatically start up. We also have others down here. Let's choose one of these that you don't often see, a diagnostic policy service that enables problem detection, troubleshooting, and resolution for Windows components. It's started and it's automatic. With any of these, I could right mouse click, choose the properties for the service, and find out what it's running as. I can tell it to start up automatically or manually or delay the start of this service. Maybe don't log on as the system account. Maybe log on as a service account. You can choose which account you'd like to use for this service. You can also set this service up so that if it fails, you can have it automatically restart. A lot of people will do this for the spooler, for instance. Down here in this view, we'll go all the way down to our print spooler. This is set up, of course, so that if you ever turn into a, have a problem with it, after the first failure, it restarts. After the second failure, it restarts. And if it ever has another failure, just forget it. Let's not even restart it anymore. We're finished. And of course, we can modify those things as well. We also have that mention I said of dependencies. This service must have other things that must be running at the same time for it to work properly. And you can view here, we have to have the remote procedure call with the DCOM server process launcher running to have this print spooler service start. If it's not, those things aren't running, and we're trying to start the print spooler, it'll give us an option that says, we need some other things started. Do you want to start those as well so that you don't have to individually go down to those individual uh, applications or services or components just to get those running? It'll do that for us automatically. If you have a particular machine that seems to be having problems with resources, maybe somebody's complaining that's running out of memory during the day, or we're having a problem with CPU cycles, or maybe we have other some other type of performance issue on the computer, maybe we would like to gather some statistics over a long period of time so that we can come back in a day and get a view for what's happened on this computer from a performance perspective for that entire day. We can use the performance monitor to do that, and we can find that in the control panel under the administrative tools, and we're looking for the performance option. In Windows Vista, the name of this is a little bit different. We'll go to our control panel under our administrative tools. It's called the Reliability and Performance Monitor. A little bit different name for Vista. Under XP in 2000, it'll be called Performance. Here is the Reliability and Performance Monitor. And like the name implies, there's a lot of performance statistics here. It's gathering a lot of information over time. This is the resource overview for your CPU, your disk, your network, and your memory. And you can start to keep track of how things are running over time. And it gets down into some very, very detailed levels here of exactly what's happening on the system and the different services and applications that are using that particular resource. I mentioned the performance monitor earlier is being able to track certain utilizations, certain memory resources, and being able to find out what's going on with those. We can add a resource to this by clicking the green plus sign. And it's going to bring up a number of counters for us that we could add to this. So let's go up here and let's add things like a physical disk. And in this physical disk, I would like to look at percentage read time. And I'll add that. And the percentage disk time and the disk write time and the idle time as a percentage. And we'll click OK. And it's now going to start tracking those as different colors. You'll see the, the yellow, the blue, the green, and the red are now looking at different things like idle times and response times and other pieces. We could add memory resources to this. We could add CPU resources to this and really just have it now collect data for us. And later on, we want to come back and see what's running on this machine. We simply go to our performance monitor. And now we've collected a lot of statistics about how this computer has been over time. Let's review some of these administrative tools. Our first question is, what administrative tool is a central console for many different utilities? 
Well, we used that not only in our previous video when we were working with disks, but we did it already in our event viewer. We simply go to the computer management view and we can start any one of those. The next question is, what utility can manage background processes? We were working with this utility earlier under our services view where we could start or stop all of these background services that run behind the scenes. And the last question is, what utility provides long-term st system statistics? The long-term statistical rollup that we were looking at is found under our performance monitor. And we've gone through now all of these different requirements for 227.02 section 2.3 where we've been able to use the event viewer, computer management, services, and our performance monitor. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to send me an email, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>